There are many characters within anime that have interesting backstories, some of which might even make you cry or empathize with. One of the most intricate backstories within Gintama is Sakata Gintoki's, the protagonist of the series. Today on Gintama Explained, we will be diving into Gintoki's entire origin story from beginning to end. There is currently no information as to what happened to Gintoki's parents nor where he was born. Very early on in his life, he was a child scavenger, a child that would survive off the remnants of battlefields. In order to survive, Gintoki searched the battlefields in search of food and weapons in order to protect himself. Due to this, some nearby villagers witnessed these events and soon gave him the nickname, the Corpse Eating Demon. As far as what we know, Gintoki never ate off the flesh of another individual, but if he was ever unable to find himself finding any, it is quite possible that he resorted to these means. One day, upon Gintoki's searches, he encounters Yoshida Shoyo, who came to visit the young Gintoki after hearing these rumors. Taking a liking to Gintoki, Shoyo convinces Gintoki to join his school in which orphans could learn and adapt to society. The school was named Shoka Sonjuku, where he learned the ways of the sword and other academics. It was here that Gintoki was finally able to make friends such as the likes of Katsura and Tagasugi, and also where he learned how to trust. However, good things never last forever. Eventually, during the time in which the Kansai Purge was taking place, Shoyo School gathers the attention of the Tenshouin Naraku who arrest Yoshida Shoyo and end up burning down Shoka Sanjuku. Before Shoyo was taken away, Shoyo asked Gintoki to protect his fellow comrades in his absence, to which Gintoki promised. With the rest of the students learning about the fate of Yoshida Shoyo, they mutually decided upon joining the Joy Wars in order to rescue their master and began preparing. A few years pass and around this time, the Joy Wars were nearing their end and the group of rebel students have already earned a reputation amongst themselves in the war. The group of rebel students were formed under the leadership of the four heavenly kings, which were Katsura Kotaru, Takasugi Shinsuke, Sakamoto Tatsuma, and Gintoki himself self, which earned the title the Shiro Yasha, or White Demon, due to his appearance and fierce fighting style amongst the battlefield. At one point during the war, Tagasugi asked Gintoki to protect Shoyo in Tagasugi's stead if he were to die. However, Gintoki never truly agreed to Tagasugi's proposal and instead asked Tagasugi to promise him that he would stay alive. As the fighting was ensuing, Sakamoto faced an injury in which he was unable to wield a sword and was put out of commission for the remainder of the war. Soon after this, during a battle, all of the students who were led by the four heavenly kings were all killed, besides Gintoki, Tagasugi, and Katsura who were captured by the Naraku. The Naraku, who were also holding Yoshida Shoyo captured and still alive, forced Gintoki between two choices, either to kill Shoyo in order to save his comrades, or to kill Katsura and Tagasugi in order to rescue their teacher. Gintoki took it upon himself to execute Shoyo in order to honor his promise to his sensei, to always protect his comrades. In turn, however, this broke Gintoki's promise to Tagasugi to keep Shoyo alive. Before Gintoki struck down his sensei, Shoyo uttered only a few words to him, thank you. Automatically knowing what he meant, Gintoki gives a slight smile and puts down the man who gave him a home, who gave him food, who accepted him for who he was, who gave him friends, and most importantly, essentially gave Gintoki something that Gintoki never got to experience before, a father. After the death of Shoyo and after the trio's enemies left, Gintoki, Katsura, and Tagasugi bury their comrades and go back to Shoka Sanjuku to bury the head of their late master. As the war was finally over and their main objective had failed, Gintoki and his friends go their separate ways with Tagasugi blaming Gintoki for the death of their sensei, and Gintoki shouldering the guilt of not keeping his promise to his friends. With no place to go and no place to turn to, Gintoki reverts back to the experience he felt as a child, the experience of being alone and with no sense of purpose. 
However, one day while visiting a nearby village, the wandering Gintoki manages to overhear a man who is trying to offer up his daughter to be executed in his place to a group of officials. Instinctively, Gintoki offered the officials to take his head instead of the man's daughter, and thus, both he and the man originally in question were arrested. It is unknown to how long Gintoki was imprisoned, but while less his time within the jail cell, he unknowingly met the girl in which he saved, which happened to be Ikeda Asaimon. Ironically, the man that witnessed Gintoki's kind deed also happened to be his executioner. However, after the execution of Asaimon's father, the man said that he had no right to cut down Gintoki, as a demon has no right to cut down another demon. These words stuck with Gintoki for the rest of his life, as these words shed some light on his future and gave Gintoki hope that he could change and become a better person. Eventually, the executioner releases Gintoki from his prison, and Gintoki wandered around endlessly in the cold night, starving and injured, and eventually collapsed near a grave in which Gintoki thought of his own. Yet, it seems as though luck was on Gintoki's side once again. While Gintoki was in the midst of a graveyard and on the verge of death, he encountered a woman who was visiting her husband's grave to leave food offerings. This woman was Otose. Gintoki just so happened to be leaning on her husband's grave and asked Otose if he could have the offerings that she set out around the grave, to which Otose replied, ask my husband. Gintoki told her that the dead don't talk and proceeded to eat the food offerings, but in return, he promised Otose's late husband that he would watch over her and protect her for the remainder of his life. After the encounter with Otose, Otose gave Gintoki a place to stay within her own shop on the second floor. Here, Gintoki formed the original Yorozua, along with Kanemaru, Ikasawa, and Furuhashi. Kanemaru was a man with a psycho gun on his right arm and also happened to be an assassin known as the Black Dragon. Ikasawa, on the other hand, just seemed to be known for her alcohol problem, and Furuhashi happened to be the Yorozua's mascot who also happened to have a psycho gun like Kanemaru. The old Yorozua also had an unnamed woman working for them known as the Beautiful Fleshly Woman, who essentially took care of the group's finances, paperwork, and other tasks. Together, their business seemed to flourish and began to gain recognition amongst the locals, though as soon as Gintoki learned about the members forming romantic bonds with one another, Gintoki became lonely and jealous and thus tied up the members and threw them into the river causing the original Yorozua to disband. It is uncertain if any of them lived. From this point on, Gintoki ran Yorozua Ginchan by himself. That is, until he eventually encountered Shimura Shimpachi and Kagura, to which, together, they formed the new Yorozua. Gintoki shows a close brotherly bond with Shimpachi, which can be seen most prevalent when Gintoki gets on his hands and knees and begs the Shinsengumi to protect Shimpachi during the school of Beam Saber arc. Gintoki also really cares about Kagura and her well-being as well, even going as far as to buying Kagura a new umbrella, which she still cherishes. Between Kagura and Gintoki's relationship, they share a brotherly sister bond or may even be perceived as a father to daughter type of bond as well, as Kagura greatly admires Gintoki and has even picked up upon some of his bad habits. Gintoki, Shimpachi, and Kagura have gone on many adventures as the new Yorozua and have never left Gintoki's side, even despite the constant bickering that the trio may face. Nonetheless, while Gintoki might not show his soft spot a lot, Gintoki cares deeply about Shimpachi and Kagura and treats them like family, which is something that Gintoki had taken away from him at a very young age. Being born into a world in which he had to fight all his life to survive from experiencing the death of his sensei, the most important person within Gintoki's life, and feeling the guilt and responsibility of having his friends go their separate ways, to having nowhere to turn to and happily giving up his own life, Gintoki still carries on and tries to keep his head held high, even from a past that still haunts him. Through these events, Gintoki has learned to care for and trust once again through the people he has met throughout the series, and in short, while Gintoki might have lost his previous family, he at least found a new one, one where he could turn to, 
and one where he could call home.